Hello, good morning or good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for what is now our second ever OmniTesting Comp. OmniTesting Comp brings together testers, developers, and everyone on the software development lifecycle to share new ideas and different perspectives on software testing. I'm your host, Donislava Docheva from X-Ray, and X-Ray is the creator and sponsor of OmniTesting Comp. If you haven't heard of us before, X-Ray is the leading quality assurance and test management app for Jira. The theme of this conference is test automation, and we'll be discussing how test automation can lead us to deliver better products faster and more efficiently. Today, you'll hear a very diverse set of perspectives on test automation with technical talks, personal experiences, and tested and learned methodologies. You have a panel on the right side where you can connect and chat with all participants as well as ask questions. And we really encourage you to do that to make the most out of this experience. After each session, we'll have a 10 minute Q&A where each speaker will answer all of your questions. Finally, for our closing session, we'll bring together our speakers and explore how their different approaches and experiences on test automation intersect. So, Let's jump right into our headlining talk. Our headliner today is Sergio Freya, who is the Head of Solution Architecture at X-Ray. Sergio will introduce you to the concept of omni-testing, how test automation is connected to it, and what it means for modern software development. And with that, I'll hand the word over to our headliner. Sergio, over to you. Hi everyone, here we are again for our second conference around Omni testing. This time giving, giving it um, a bit more focus on test automation. When I came with Omni testing concepts some time ago, uh, leveraged by existing concepts from within the community, I was trying to give testing the importance it should have, at least from my perspective. Before starting, um, these have been really tough days for my family and my elderly dad, which is facing his biggest challenge of his life as we speak. My, my heart is with him. Uh, no matter what, thanks for every single moment you gave me so far. Um, I'm your biggest successful deployment to production. And I'm also your biggest bug. I would say far from perfect, but still all that I am, I am in big part to you. I cannot ever thank you. My words are very scarce. I hope you get well. Hope we can still laugh once again. Hope you don't suffer. Uh, it's perhaps too late to say all the things I should have said, but Still, my my heart has been and will always be with you, that This presentation that you won't perhaps see, it's dedicated to you. My life is dedicated to you because you gave it to me. So today, I want to prompt a discussion around what testing is nowadays, in a broader sense. And for that, I'll talk of agile testing, exploratory testing, holistic testing, and finally, omni-testing. How are all these things related? We'll see ahead. We'll uh, see also how test automation fits that part of the puzzle. But for that, we need to deep dive a bit into quality and testing, what they mean and how they relate to one another. That way we can better understand the role of um, test automation, especially nowadays with um, this increasing trend of DevOps and automation in general. I'll try to provide some recommendations and lessons based on some experience and um, experience that I had and uh, some of my teams had. In the hand, I would like you to become aware that test automation 
can be used to amplify our testing, to foster collaboration, uh, to provide insights about the direction that we are taking. But test automation uh, is, is just a part of something broader where testers play a key role. Even if we are just talking about deciding the test to be automated and, and how to do so and how to ensure they are available to the team and that the team can actually do something when they provide us hints. So suddenly I start talking about combining test automation with exploratory testing, but more on that uh, ahead. So let's start by trying to define what testing means. In 2020, I had this rough definition of testing. Testing is a target process of challenging something, a uh, product and our understanding of it, using a set of activities leveraged by specific human skills. I knew that uh, this was perhaps not very complete, but it was my perspective on what testing is or was. Meanwhile, I've updated this definition. I still don't like it that much, uh, and I think it needs um, further refinement and simplification. And I, I don't want to call it a definition for testing. Instead, it's, it's more like a perspective uh, that may change for sure. So as I see it, and let me quote, testing is a target yet exploratory process of challenging something, uh, an idea, a product, its assets and its usage, and our understanding of it using a set of activities leveraged by specific human skills, augmented by tools. Testing is amplified with knowledge, collaboration and tooling to enable consistent delivery of value so teams can embrace change with lower risk. The changes that I made in the definition are highlighted in green. I've added the exploratory on purpose because it's something intrinsic to testing. Even when we follow a script, we are exploring. If I follow a script to press the, po uh, the power button of some gadget, I'm trying to uncover information that may be close or not to what I might be expecting. Sometimes I don't know what to expect. Uh, sometimes uh, I know, for example, what to not expect. So even if I press all the buttons uh, inside the car, I don't know what to expect, but I wouldn't expect it to crash. When we test, we don't just test the, the product or small bits of it. We test also our own ideas the business ideas, the, the user scenarios, and more. We test what we do to figure out risks and ways of optimizing what we do. Therefore, testing goes way beyond testing code. And whenever testing, questioning, and exploring, raising questions, exposing assumptions, we collaborate and use a diverse set of unique human uh, set of human skills. Skills that can make use of tools to obtain or expose uh, some information that otherwise would be hard to get. For example, we use tools to provide us insights on performance metrics. Whether that information is relevant or not is something that the tester and the team have to discuss. Testing is not static because code isn't static, infrastructure isn't static, users are not static. <clears throat> Therefore, the inner tester in ourselves needs to continuously improve knowledge. This knowledge is limited if it gets silos in ourselves. Therefore, we need to collaborate, not often, but continuously to remove unnecessary risks or figure out, figure out like ways of dealing with them. 
Tools don't replace us, but can replace repetitive tasks where we don't have much value. They can also uh, assist on what we do. Therefore, testing is about these three aspects. Knowledge, collaboration and tooling. Why? Uh, because we want to be able to figure out together what value is and deliver it frequently. Let me share once again Lisa Crispin and Janet Gregory's definition of Agile Continuous Testing. Here you can see that we are talking about practices that occur continuously and not about automated tests that run continuously. We can also see that if it's, it's more like um, a team sport to build quality in and the team does it continuously because value is being worked hopefully uh, and continuously and delivered continuously. Exploratory testing for Marat is driven by learning and agency. It's something um, that we say that it's like simultaneous test design and execution. By having um, agency, this, the freedom and the willing to explore, uh, leveraged by continuous learning, testing can be used to provide more impactful results. Manet emphasizes testing as something that it is exploratory in nature and that covers more, most, of, if not all, all of the activities that we do around testing. Even when we have test automation, we start by exploring some ideas and assumptions we may have. We can do it together by pairing and then as a, like an output, we can have some automated test scripts. But we can also use some automation tool or a script to play with the system and explore how it behaves. When that exploration stops, it becomes static and gets persisted eventually as test scripts. So everything revolves around exploratory testing that we use to investigate the system and the things around it is what we do to uncover unknowns. So we can deal with them. I highly recommend uh, following Marat, her blog posts and talks um, that uh, are around walking towards continuous delivery with exploratory testing. Uh, I, I think this picture is actually an oversimplification of all of her work, so please go ahead and check out her uh, articles and um, her talks on this matter. Meanwhile, uh, Janet Gregory has done great work around the, this topic and used the, the DevOps Infinity Loop as um, a starting point to see where and how testing could fit into it. And the first thing to note is that the Infinity Loop is not something we slowly walk step by step as, uh, as you, it would happen in, for example, inside a factory when building out a product. Instead, it's something that's happening continuously and we can actually act and bring value to any of those moments. So we start with discovery moments um, to test ideas and discover what might be valuable or not. And by collaborating and talking about ideas, uh, risks will pop up and uh, the team can decide how, how to handle those. One important aspect is to have manageable and testable uh, stories. Those will need to be refined and to have concrete usage examples that can eventually be automated through ATDD or uh, BDD. Understanding itself is enhanced by testing uh, using uh, prototypes such as um, mockups that the team and the users can interact with. The idea is to have early experiments that can avoid these uh, costly implementations later on. Then the code 
uh, is built, supported by automated tests to support quick checking and also easy refactoring. But also the code should provide the, let's say, the means for analysis later on, like root cause analysis. Therefore, we have logging, we have events, we have instrumentation. To get the code deployed successfully, one needs to test the infrastructure and run a bunch of automated tests looking at different quality criteria. Code can actually get deployed to multiple environments where different types of tests can be performed, uh, such as, for example, uh, performance testing. Then it gets to production, if we are comfortable enough with it. But when in production, we, we know that even though we may have performed a lot of testing, we still lack real feedback from users based on their experiences. So we monitor and observe, and we can enable some features meanwhile to see how they, they go, how they are used. From all of this information, we learn and figure out new ideas or ways of um, refining existing ones. And we keep walking that infinity loop. So everything is really connected and it's based on the understanding that we leverage using, let's say, the multiple facets of testing. I think that we are all talking about the same thing, but we are eventually um, emphasizing uh, different aspects of it. Say, I came with um, Omni uh, as an ad adjective that would describe, uh, at least in my perspective, testing in a more complete and, let's say, fair, fair way. Omni comes from um, the Latin word uh, omnis, and means all, the all of, all things, everything. Omni testing highlights testing as an uh, interesting uh, part of making and maintaining high quality products. And as quality covers so many aspects about our products, it requires a team level commitment. Because everything we do, or that we don't, may affect the value that we are providing. Ultimately, uh, this means we cannot shift it neither to the left nor to the right. Omni testing is unbound because it's not limited to specific roles or people, uh, specific assets, specific test levels, types, techniques and approaches, uh, specific methodologies, specific phases, specific tools, specific timing. Instead, omni-testing uh, looks at testing in a more, let's say, complete way, involving all of the previous in a dynamic way, according with the risks, to make sure that our efforts are used to maximize value and diminish the, the time to take it to production. But it also looks at, um, at, at this value as something that is dynamic and that cannot be disconnected uh, from what is happening in production. We cannot ever forget that value is served in production. Otherwise, it's probably waste. Omni-testing is human-centered. People collaborate with one another uh, in order to increase this shared understanding and they will also use tools to assist them in some tasks whenever possible, but it's us humans in the team that drive testing. Testing that doesn't wait for inputs. Instead, it's, it's an active player and an influencer on how value is materialized in the solution or in the product that we are building. By raising questions, by observing, uh, by looking for gaps, by talking about risks, all of that provides, let's say, learning and improvement in opportunities uh, that we can take advantage of continuously. So testing not only as a multifaceted skill, 
but as a um, holistic concern crucial to value. Testing that is part of building a product and not something that we cannot, can opt out. Testing that is built around the idea of understanding and maximizing value as a whole and not just about finding bugs. Omni-testing may not be this radical new concept, but it's so much more than running automated tests continuously. Perhaps calling it Omni, Omni may tell much more about its unique essence. However, today we'll focus on test automation or automation in testing uh, as you may prefer. And suddenly you start seeing magic solutions and buzzwords. One of them is continuous testing tools. What? Continuous testing tools? Yeah, really. So just Google for continuous testing tools and you'll find many interesting and surprising results. Even Selenium pop ups as a continuous testing tool. In, fa in fact, let's say most tool vendors present themselves as having continuous testing tools. So whenever people talking about continuous testing tools, they're talking about running test automation all over again, running tons of checks, no matter if they are unit tests or UI tests or AI ML baker tests. But this continuous testing is dangerous because it misses all the things that we should be thinking when talking about continuous testing. The only continuous testing tool is the human being. As someone that is always looking for problems and um, ways of improving, having in mind value and that, and uh, what may be important for all stakeholders and thinking about ways of improving the delivery of value. No matter if we are talking about uh, technological aspects or more process kind of aspects. Of course, automated checks and other automation uh, around testing can give us information uh, that we can use in order to take uh, decisions. Still, their scope is limited. Those scripts do what they do and that's it. They don't change the path you walk. They don't go paths, paths um, never walked before. And even if they did that, how could they report valuable information on that? People may tell you that those tools help you achieve greater quality. Well, we need to understand a bit more about what quality really means and how it is related uh, to testing and the, all the things we do around testing, not just test automation. So what is quality? And this is a recurring topic and discussion. Maybe it's an emotion or it, or it may be like a, perhaps a comparison. Is there a, like a simple way of defining it? Quality is value to some person. And I, here I'm quoting Jerry Weinberg. Well, in other words, it means that quality is subjective. It depends on the heights of the beholder. The other day, uh, I was in having this conversation with my wife about um, values in life. And she was counter arguing with me. Well, those are not values. Those are feelings. And that made me think for a while. I do think that values and feelings uh, are different things, but they do have a, like a subjective root. Thinking on quality. We were saying that quality is value to some stakeholder. And indeed, we are talking about feelings. What makes those stakeholders satisfied or happy, even if it's happy enough? So putting it in very simple words, 
Quality is about making people happy. No matter if we are talking about the internal product team, business, uh, organization, or the end users. Starting with end users, they become happy if it addresses their needs. It addresses their expectations. And what we mean exactly by that? What are those expectations? Does the system perform the way it says? Maybe there are performance uh, kind of expectations and other that we should care about. End users also become happy if they seamless uh, experience the product in a very also let's say simplified way in the other hand the, the team becomes happy if changes can be made safely uh, that can also be easily made one can understand like the architecture software can be also operate like easily one can understand what is happening if it provides the means for root cause analysis but talking from an organization standpoint, the organization becomes happy if there are low costs with support and maintenance, if there are low headaches with customers, if there is low exposure in social media due to some problems, if there is the ability to innovate fast, and if there is also the ability to overcome, let's say, problems fast. So all these people will approach quality from different angles, which will change with time. First of all, quality is multidimensional. If we using if we use like a balance uh, as an uh, analogy each one of us uses different weights for different quality criteria so the um, over quality uh, as measured by that balance will be different for every single person besides quality is not static as i mentioned it may easily get outdated for example, uh, an Instagram profile with few posts, people would say that it has low quality as, it, uh, as the profile interest decreases with time. That's why we need to provide value consistently. Or else our product will get outdated and forgotten. That implies that we deliver value and also that we understand if... Uh, uh, that we understand if we are actually delivering value and how our users are using the product. We need to find ways of measuring value as much as we can. So if a page or a feature becomes in use, then its value is questionable. If our users use our product while it's free, but we cannot actually convert them to paying users. Well, maybe we need to test our value proposition. Quality and testing are intertwined friend, friends, but they are not the same thing. I can even say that there are other important aspects to consider nowadays that um, related to this whenever talking about quality or even measuring some aspects of it. M most of you may have probably uh, read the Accelerate book, which most of all um, is a scientific work by Nicole Forsgren, uh, Jazz Amble and Gene Keen. And the research highlights four key metrics for high performance on software delivery performance. Lead time, deployment frequency, mean time to restore and change fail percentage. The two first metrics are related to tempo, throughput, speed. In simple words, it tells us 
how fast and consistent is to get things to production. And the last two metrics are related with specific quality criteria, such as stability, resilience, recoverability, uh, and the progressability. The two metric pairs, they are connected and somehow counterbalance one another. We cannot just be fast on getting a feature to production. We need also uh, to look how often it will break and how easy it is to, to restore the service when that happens. Therefore, they cannot be disconnected. For me, let's say as a user, I also see the overall lead time, considering like the time uh, an idea pop up to when it landed in production. Also as a, a quality criteria. So if a product takes time to deliver value, at least my perspective on what's value, then it has lower quality. But that's my perspective. The research also highlights automation, including test automation and other CI CD practices as something that contribute like in a positive way for software delivery performance. By the way, um, organization shapes practice, but the practice also shape the organization. This is an important aspect. Quality um, exists because and for people. Accelerate the pits that if people embrace a set of practice having a transform transformational uh, leadership along with uh, lean product uh, development and lean management, it will contribute to greater in, uh, identity, uh, less burnout, uh, less employment pain, less rework. So this touches quality from an internal team pr uh, perspective, but that will influence also quality from an excel external perspective. Quality, once again, like as multiple perspectives. We cannot see them just in isolation. Last year, I introduced the quality ice cream track as a way to talk about quality testing and value. I hope this model resembles like an ice cream truck. We can see that testing informs on quality aspects that Ultim uh, ultimately uh, define what value means and what value means for someone. This value is threatened by risks that we can try to expose and uh, mitigate through testing and coding. Coding affects value and it can affect testing by having better or worse testability, for example. One important aspect that I would like to highlight is that Testing is not just about informing on those negative risks, but also on opportunities or gaps that can become opportunities to increase the value we deliver. As in a, in a truck, all is connected. So testing plays a key role. We cannot take it out and disconnect from all other things. So given this truck, where would we fit test automation in, into it? Well, it's one of the many things we do whenever testing to provide us some quick information and not only. So we can fit it into that blue circle uh, on the upper left corner. However, we can see that we cannot replace testing by test automation as test automation cannot be fully adapted by risks. We can eventually pick some automated tests based on risks, but we cannot make new test ideas. New test scripts, uh, like automatically, based on the, on the risks. Automated scripts cannot, cannot provide us like insights about opportunities or gaps because they lack the tester background and the whole product context. So quality, that's subjective definition that makes different people happy needs to be discovered by humans and that in the hand will shape 
the kind of testing that we need to be that we need to perform there is no test automation that can magically be built having this in mind having said that test automation still plays an important part because it can give us fast feedback on a regular basis and it can augment some of our own capabilities but what is test automation well test automation is like taking a train to go somewhere having some stops where you look at the window to have like a quick sneak peek but taking that train exists in, la, in a broader context it exists because you aim to go from some place to some other place and you need you need to do that in a certain time frame without spending that much making this travel all over can have some problems though first of all this travel must exist for a reason does it still make sense how often do you need to make it second if you sleep while traveling then you assume everything was fine just because you arrived at the destination but perhaps you miss like a lot of important things such as a beautiful landscape while traveling so even if it takes such a trip we need to have our eyes wide open and observe third could I have a better way of achieving my goal? Maybe I'm going to a place to collect some information that I could easily obtain by making a, a phone call or by sending an email. There are a bunch of things when thinking about test automation, but it becomes clear that it's part of something much broader and does need some strategic thinking about it. It doesn't replace our thinking. Instead, it takes us through a predefined route. But this route might not be the one that we need to focus at a given moment. On the other hand, there are um, automated routes that give us food for thought. If we have like an observant, uh, curious and exploratory mindset. Some years ago, I saw this orange-like fruit in a supermarket. It seemed like orange, and I do love oranges, but it was bigger, brighter. It gave me that promise of satisfaction. And it was quite expensive. But you know what? I bought it. <laughs> I came home, and I gave it a try. And it was so bitter. And so nothing like an orange. So I bought something that was totally useless to me, that gave me this bad experience uh, with less few euros in my pocket. So the same happens with test automation. Sometimes we get overwhelmed by the amazing features of some test automation uh, tool, promising fast, fantastic uh, automation with low cost and even low maintenance. Well, those tools don't exist yet. Not sure if they will ever exist. So starting to, uh, to address a problem with the tool right away uh, may not be the best solution. Using a tool just because it works fine for other team in some other contests is not the best approach. So before tools comes knowledge and collaboration. As a result of that, the team may decide to use some tools to assist in some parts, but the idea is to do small experiments. So you can see how, whether that works or not. And if not, try something else.
I talked to a team recently that was not looking for to implement test automation due to um, a previous failed attempt in another project in another company where test automation was like a, a synonymous of a ton of flaky selenium tests which were very hard to maintain so because of that unsuccessful test automation project now test automation like as a whole was being put aside even if there are much more different types of test automation that you can do eventually at different levels in another team a similar experience um, had happened using like a mix of gherking along with some limited coding skills so these examples are recurring uh, in my experience and they exist because of several reasons just naming a few existence of uh, siloed test automation teams and lack of a true collaboration um, lack of knowledge on the product but also on coding and lack of true testing skills uh, to figure out risks uh, and where is value and what value means and if test automation can actually protect and monitor that value so please don't start your automation by implementing a ton of um, selenium uh, tests like blindly remember that if we try a rotten apple once probably we will avoid apples in the future no matter the kind of apple but let's see some concrete examples of uh, how test automation can help us and since we are in an x-ray event we can talk a bit about ourselves i don't want to overload with information but uh, in x-ray uh, provides this heuristic that we call coverage uh, it's a core feature of x-ray that people use like uh, one of the sources for taking decisions uh, based on the tests that cover user story and their related results in some scope that scope can be a version or an environment so with that we can quickly evaluate if a requirement or uh, user story uh, is covered by by tests no matter their type or the approach that we choose to follow uh, for doing testing but it gives you it 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 also gives you like a hint about the quality whether that requirement is okay or not okay based on the results uh, that you obtain for a given version uh, of the product for example in a, in a given browser so this is just an heuristic and it should be treated as such but it can be helpful to provide you some insights whether the story is good enough uh, based on the reporting testing results this coverage that you can see uh, on the requirement or user story screen uh, depends on the version and the environment that you want to analyze it for therefore if you analyze coverage for let's say version 1 x-ray will calculate the latest status obtained on version 1 for the related tests that in turn depends on the status that you report for each step in case you are using traditional step based test cases and if we want we can make this analysis just for a specific browser for example which will restrict the runs that should be considered for this calculation well you can see that there are a bunch of variables affecting the calculation of coverage and it's a core feature of x-ray so we cannot have the risk of messing uh, messing with it so the team has implemented a bunch of automated checks to verify the, the expected behavior of the coverage calculation but there's more than that type of checks are you tracking performance accessibility or for example uh, on a regular basis in pull requests um, i use github to manage my own personal blog uh, sergiofreire.com and every new article gets a pull request 
On the pull request, I can have access to a preview environment that gets spin off automatically, so I can play with it and explore it by myself. But that temporary environment uh, is also used to run some automated tests, checks that, that verify the existence existence of some core pages. On that environment, Lighthouse runs a bunch of, of tests to calculate some metrics on accessibility, uh, performance, uh, best practice, progressive web apps, and SEO. Those metrics are available in the pull request, and if certain minimum values are not met, I cannot merge it. On the right side, you can see another pull request, and this one opened automatically by a tool that found that there is a new dependency that should be updated due to a, a security issue. So the tool can open automatically a pull request with the necessary uh, change in the, in, the in the file that holds the dependencies. And tests will be run, and then I can simply press the merge button to send it to production. This merge could even eventually be automated, as long as I have the, like, the minimum confidence on the overall process and the feedback provided by the existing tests. Tools such as Sonar Cube can provide quality insights either on the pull request or even on the IDE. It, by having feedback about reliability, security, maintainability, cold coverage, and other metrics, uh, along with the trend, the team can assess if they are improving quality, including from a maintenance perspective. Many times, that is a forgotten aspect. But maintainability is crucial because if code is complex, then it's more prone to errors and harder to evolve. In this other example, we can see uh, a pull request where we didn't improve the mentioned aspects of quality we made it worse, so we need to review it. Uh, a better example will be the following one that I'm showing you right now. Still, we need to look at code coverage because it says zero. Is this value correct? If so, can we improve it? In other projects, we're looking at performance using Grafana and a dedicated performance environment. We look at the average minimum and maximum responses, but we also look at the distribution of times using an histogram, which is quite helpful uh, because it helps us spot things such as deadlocks, which may uh, get some requests to take way longer than most of the requests. Perfection is impossible and an enemy of improvement. Thinking, seeking for having like a perfect test automation solution is an impossible task and will inhibit us from delivering some small yet valuable uh, steps uh, towards having relevant continuous feedback about our builds and our deployments. And complete test automation is a myth. Uh, complete testing is a myth. Understanding all the possible uses and risks related to our products is a myth as it is infinite. Therefore, we need to use test automation wisely, thinking that even though it provides a limited vision of our product and the things around it, it can still provide us some valuable insights. But it has a cost, including maintenance. So we need to think uh, quite carefully. Every product has pains, every team has pains. So we need to be open-minded and think if we can deal with those pains using test automation. As a vaccine, test automation may not provide like a cure and may easily get outdated, but it can be a quick way for us to handle with someone, handle like some ongoing challenge. Um, so we can use our, use our resources elsewhere especially because problems and change, uh, challenges are not isolated. We can have multiple challenge, challenges in parallel. This is in fact uh, closely related with quality criteria. Remember that there isn't only one that we need to have in mind. There are many and quality is multidimensional. 
Therefore, the best way to succeed is to apply test automation where it can support the team overcoming some of these challenges, especially the ones that are recurring. Imagine that you're building and maintaining a house. How would you test it? What would be the fit for test automation? Well, the first test could be checking around its definition. A house can be defined as a building that serves as a living quarters for one or three families, a shelter or a refuge of a wild animal, a building for human habitation, a building in which something is sheltered or stored, so these are just a couple of definitions. We can properly see that there is some ambiguity on it. Uh, we can nevertheless focus on building on a building that serves the purpose of hosting someone, that acts uh, as a shelter and it serves the purpose of human habitation. My last phrase actually had a lot of assumptions and still have some ambiguity. There is no clear spec for us. We can nevertheless use others as reference. A quick way to check if our house does the essential is, which is being a shelter, is to quickly check if it is surrounded by walls, uh, having a way to enter, of course, if it has a ceiling and some uh, windows. We could, could also check if uh, um, it has, has access to electricity, water, and the public sewer. So this kind of basic essential checks is something we can easily automate. It's our smoke test that tells us if this house is something that we can actually call a house or not. Then we can focus on a door, the front door. Every house has a door, right? Well, most of, most of the houses. So we can test the lock and see if it opens and closes the front door. The door is, is a basic kind of unit component of our house. It, it, it really needs to work, period. But our house may be located in a windy place. So besides, you know that your house will always be revamped because your partner <laughs> likes to keep things updated. But then you don't know if those changes, the new windows, the new doors, the new decoration, how will your house deal with those? You can blow some air or get a powerful fan and keep testing your house to see if it keeps up without any fissure. Maybe security is your biggest concern as a family, especially because you are to travel a lot. So do you have ways to monitor and control the house remotely? Can you get some notifications? All of these are just examples of things we could automate. And all of those things that relate to some quality criteria can be automated. Is it worth it? How would you do it? Can you use some open source or commercial tool to assist on, on that? That's something that you need to discuss within the team. Trying to understand what's important and the recurrent uh, checks that you need to do or you wish to do can give, give you like some direction on whether test automation can provide some benefits. Remember that even a house changes, so those checks need to be reviewed. And if we are talking about um, a product that would be used by millions of people and get frequent updates, then the type of checks we need to do may be different because the risks are also different. So wrapping it up, we start by talking about what testing means and the different perspectives we have around testing. It became clear that testing is something omnipresent and part of, of the whole. It embraces a lot of different activities, focused on the accelerating the, the delivery of value. Therefore, we test ideas. We test also code infrastructure, all bits that matter. We use our unique human capabilities, uh, our curiosity and knowledge to explore, but we also use tools to help us, not to replace us. Because tools and test automation can automate some repetitive checks, we now need to perform on a continuous base. But more than that, test automation 
uh, and test automation tools can amplify some of our uh, capabilities because they allow you to run tons of tests even on parallel one needs to look at testing in a broader perspective having in mind system thinking to be aware that we cannot just act and look at one part uh, because that part interacts with all other parts somehow and this will affect one or more the, uh, of those dimensions of quality as seen by someone. Test automation done right and part of a broader testing perspective that I call omni-testing can help us deliver value more frequently and monitor that value and even raise questions about that value. Don't discard test automation because you simply uh, need it but also don't embrace it blindly because you need to think on how it can help you or better because you you need to think how it cannot just help you but how it can help you uh, uh, help the whole team now and also in the future We started by talking about what testing means and the different perspectives we have around testing. So please remember these three things. First, testing is not automatable. Testing goes beyond test automation. It requires collaboration. We use it to even test ideas we have about the product before it gets coded. And second, you need to have test automation. Why? Because you need to have like fast feedback loops, you need to have CI to provide you quick insights about the core features of your product, about your, how you're affecting security or performance. Besides, test automation frees the team to perform more hands-on exploratory testing. Third, test automation needs you. Why? Because you and the team can understand where it can give you the best value by understanding the risks and the things that should always be checked. Only humans can look at the, all the different aspects of quality and see where test automation is valuable for the current context of your team and of your product. That test automation is also code that needs to be maintained. So it needs special care and it, so it can be added to your existing pipelines and as seamless as possible. Test automation exists to assist you and to make you think on its outputs. And that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this session. My name is Sergio. I work for the X-Ray team and you can find me on Twitter using the dark telecom handle or on my personal website, sergiofreire.com where I post some articles related to agile and testing. You can use the QR code if you want to get there faster. And I'm now available for questions. Thank you.